All right, my beautiful followers, good afternoon and welcome to today's class. We are going to continue from where we stopped on this automatic phase selector. Remember, in our last video, what we saw was that we used this indicator to show which of the contactors that is in use. So if we are using the blue phase, it is going to show us this indicator. And of course, when yellow phase is available, it is going to disconnect this one and this one will take over. And then when this red phase is available, it's going to disconnect this one and this one takes over. And when it is only these two that are available, this one takes over while this one remains idle. That way. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is to include our timers on this setup. And to do that, we're going to make use of our base for the red and base for the yellow and base for the blue. So we're going to use these three bases for our timers. So install it this way. All right. So if you did not understand how this base behaves, I'm going to show you briefly before we go ahead. So we have this type of timer. That is what we're going to use. Okay. So this timer has eight terminals in a hole. All right. And it's got these pins. These pins are supposed to be slotted into the sockets of the base. So you can easily plug them in and remove them this way. Okay, so we have it labeled from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 pins. So this is the numbering. Number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4, number 5, number 6, number 7, and number 8. Okay, so this, these 8 numbers make up two different relays inside here. The first relay is made up of pin 1, pin 3, and pin 4. And the second relay is made up of pin 8, pin 5, and pin 6. Where pin 1 is the common, pin 3 is the normally open, and pin 4 is the normally closed. Then pin 8 is the common, pin 5 is the normally closed, while pin 6 is the normally open. Then pin 7 and pin 2 is for the control power, which is about 220 volts. So these timers we are going to make use of are rated 220 volts now the two relays we have here pin 1 pin 3 and pin 4 these are normal relays they are passive relays there is no form of delay whatsoever so immediately you energize this system this pin 1 moves immediately to pin 3 because pin 1 and pin 4 are connected naturally that is the normally closed so immediately you energize it it will move from pin 4 to pin 3. And then for pin 8, 5, and 6, when you energize this, there's going to be a delay, except when you set it on this dial to 0. If you don't set it to 0 on this dial, if you set it to 10 seconds, when you energize it, after 10 seconds, is this pin 8 is going to move from pin 5 onto pin 6. So this is how our timer base works. So for us to wire this, and create that delay on our contactors. We need to take the power that goes to the coil of each of these contactors, pass it through here, cause that delay before we return it to where it was supposed to go to. For example, we have the input power to all of these contactors located at pin A1 of the contactors. So for us to do that, what we're going to do is that we're going to disconnect this is the one that's supposed to go to this coil to control this coil. So we're going to disconnect it from this contactor, pass it through here, and return it back to the contactor. So to do that, we're going to slack this out, bring up this one. Of course, we're going to use it to energize our timer. So we're going to plug it in here, and then get another short wire, strip this neatly, um, this is too long and then strip again neatly Insert it here so that you can take the same power which is supposed to energize it from pin 7 and then Try to bend this neatly 
slack up this common terminal which is pin 8 inside this wire and lock it up for me so what this is going to do is that when there is presence of power from on this pin 7 it's going to route through pin 8 after the delay it's going to move from pin 5 to pin 6 so whatever signal you have here you are going to get it from pin 6 after that number of delay so for us to complete it we're going to take this wire connect this our power from pin 6 which is the normally open of our timer lock this up for me and then take this wire back to a1 where you brought this wire from so we're going to take it back to a1 lock it out a little bit more insert it and lock it up right so the next one is this one which is from this is the one that goes to a1 of this one so we're going to take it off slack it out remove it from here let's see if it gets to where we want it to get to no it's too short so we're going to get a longer wire let us use this one to replace it so i'm going to take this off remove this wire and insert this one then get this one here clean it up lock up this one and insert it then get this our short wire again strip it this way insert it on the same spot here and lock it up for me after locking it up you slack this one out and then bend this wire neatly bend it neatly and insert it here on pin 8 of this particular timer okay having done this we're now going to take another wire strip this wire neatly and set it on pin six of this one also set it like this and then lock it up then take this wire which we are going to strip again neatly Take it all the way back to A1, where you brought the other wire from. And then you lock it up. And then finally, you go to this last one. You bring up the wire, which supplies the A1 of this one. And that wire is this one. Um, take it out. It's too short. So I'm going to remove it completely. All right, this one. So I will use a fresh wire. Strip this one. Set it where this one came out from. So when we set it that way, we're gonna take it all the way to this other timer. I've got this and then strip it. So slack up this one and insert our wire. Insert it this way. And then we need another short wire. Which we're going to insert here also then we lock it up the next thing to do is to strip this one slack out on pin 8 and set this one here and lock it up then we pick up another wire pick up this wire slack it out we pick up this wire Strip it and set it on pin 6 of this one also. Lock it up. And then you bring it back to A1 where the other wire came from. So to do that, we're going to strip this and come back to our A1. And 
set these wires here. And then lock it up. Okay. So having done this, the next thing to do is to wire our neutral lines. So let's lock out on pin two of this one. We'll lock it, slack out on pin 2 of this one, insert this one, also insert this one, lock it up, and then bring it to this particular pin 2, strip this wire neatly, strip this one also neatly, clean them up. And then slack out this one on pin 2 and set these two wires and then lock them up. When this is done, you take this wire to the nearest neutral point. And then we're going to make use of here on our indicator. It's also neutral. So let's insert it here. Alright, so, having done this, the next thing to do is to install our timers. Install this one. Install this one. And install this one. So, from zero, we set this one to five seconds and five seconds and five seconds. Alright, so let us run a quick test and we're going to start with this one. So when this blue phase is available, after the delay, it closes. And when the yellow phase is available, after the delay, it closes. And when the red phase is available, after the delay, it closes. So when these two are available, after the delay here, this one closes. And of course, when it is only this one, after the delay, this one closes. So. If you like this video, please let me know in the comment section. If you have any question, also let me know in the comment section or send me a private message. And of course, please continue to stay connected with me for more tips on power. Thank you very much.